I'm recording. Yeah, okay, I'm recording. Okay, perfect. So this is a this is a demo here. We're going to see our OT device. So the OT device has a stereo uh, pair of cameras here, uh, here and here. And so what it does is it takes the, the left right, just like your vision, and combines them to be able to create uh, stereo depth. So you see here, you see the X, Y, Z dimensions. Um, that's spatially where things are located, like the Z dimension being how far away it is this direction. On this side here, you have a visualization of that. It kind of looks like a heat map, but it's actually a depth map. Um, and then over here, you can see the top view uh, visualization of what that looks like. Um, so you can do something like, say, like social distancing, like how close are things together. So is, that, is it like a bird eye view? Yeah, bird eye view, yes. Okay. Top view, yeah, bird eye view. And then over here, then you can see that it's doing, like, say, like person detection, some of our pre trained models. And then where you see the percentile, uh, the percentile is like how confident in the, the neural network is that it's um, you know predicting that say you know you're a person or the other things that it's that's picking up. All of the compute on these devices is done on the edge. Um, so all the all, all of this like here, typical device like this is processing like 10 gigabytes of data per second. But with only, the VPU, right? Uh, with the VPU, yeah, okay. that's right. All, yeah, all the compute's done on here. And then uh, for some of our hardware options, so we have a USB-C powered line here. So USB-C is used for the uh, pillow to power and the connectivity. Um, these are a series two of products, um, and you can see some of the capabilities. So this is wide field of view, which goes up to 150 degree diagonal field of view lens. Um, and then here you have one that has a um, infrared, so there's an infrared LED uh, for nighttime operation, and then a laser dot projector for active stereo um, to improve stereo depth performance. What do you call active stereo? Uh, Actus Stereo, um, so it's, uh, it's like a laser dot projector, infrared laser dot projector. So basically it basically like shines a bunch of dots. Imagine like a little kid spray painting on a wall and it can take something that doesn't have very good texture. Like if you're trying to see the depth of like a white surface, um, it'd be difficult if it had passive stereo. But when you have active stereo with the IR laser dot projector that improves the performance. Okay, cool. So, um, and then as you kind of go along here, um, you can see that we also have uh, our POE series. Uh, so this is uh, IP65 rated. Um, and you can see here that from a connecting standpoint, so it's not USB-C, um, it's M8, M12 uh, coded. Um, and so these devices are more for like the industrial rugged uh, type of application. What's the difference with USB-C? Uh, well, so it's just whether you're connecting with um, you know, USB cable or you're connecting with uh, like a power over Ethernet cable like this. Does this bring anything? Uh, so this brings both the power and the connectivity okay. uh, to the device. Okay. Um, and then we have then we have things like uh, this is where you just have an RGB uh, single camera. This is if you don't need depth. Um, so you just want to do object detection, but you didn't need to know the uh, spatial dimensions of it. Um, and then some of the new products that we have. So this is a uh, short range. Um, so it's called the Oak DSR. Um, and so this stereo pair being very close together means that you can have more accurate depth estimation when it's uh, close to the device, like one meter or less. And then here we have our uh, Oak D long range, so Oak D LR. And so this is really neat. Um, it actually has three different stereo baseline pairs. So this is short for closer distances, uh, medium for you know, mid-range mid distances. And then you have this longer stereo pair. And this would be for detecting something that's, that's further away. When you spread this uh, stereo pair further away, you can actually uh, accurately detect depth at very long distances. We have one customer that has a, the stereo depth is a little, uh, baseline is a little wider than this, but they've been able to do depth at 300 meters um, with, with some pretty decent accuracy. Um, and then product-wise, some of the other stuff. So we have modular options. Um, so this is where we have a, like a system on module. And so for the system on module, you can take the system on module and you can connect it to a baseboard. So this would be where you want to integrate um, kind of the core technology um, into the bigger base for what you're doing. And so in this case, this is actually our Oak FFC 4P. So it has um, uh, ports for four different cameras. And so you can take one of these FFC cables and you can connect them into one of these ports here. Um, and then you can, uh, you can work on like this. Just like we used to do with Raspberry Pi. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and small cameras before you guys come into the Yeah, market. exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. And so this is the Series 2 version, but we also have a Series 3 version of this now where it's 6P, so you can do up to uh, up to six ports, up to six cameras at the, at the same time. Cool. Should we see the robot? Oh, yes. I don't want to forget the robot. Yeah, so to highlight our Series 3 of products, um, we wanted to uh, actually create our first robot ever. Uh, so this thing is called Ray, which stands for Robotics Access for Everyone. And the reason why we wanted to show this is we wanted to demonstrate these two capabilities of Series 3 that are a big step change for us. 
the first is, is that this actually can be a host. So whereas some of the other devices maybe be connected to something else as a host, like a computer, a Jetson Nano, Raspberry Pi, um, this is actually running Yocto Linux on it as an ARM A53 quad core processor. Um, so that makes it so that it can do things like control the motors that are on, on the device. Um, and then the other thing that we wanted to highlight with this is, is that um, it'll have a Robot Hub available. So Robot Hub is our cloud and application layer. So for customers that are getting Ray, they'll download uh, Robot Hub on their tablet or their smartphone and they'll be able to run different applications uh, such as like follow me, hide and go seek, and it's open source. So if you wanted to develop your own application, you'd be able to uh, put it into Robot Hub. And so you can be able to, you could really develop uh, really neat stuff with this. This is the first prototype. Uh, so we've actually made some improvements um, for the final version that will be shipping come June. Um, so some of the improvements that you can see here is that actually the, uh, the wheels are inside the housing. Um, uh, and then it also has a, uh, a 4K sensor in the, in the front here in addition to the stereo pair that's in the, the front, and there's also a stereo pair in the back, and it also has uh, like a one inch diagonal uh, uh, screen as well. Cool, very cool. So would I be able to plug any other sensor on it, for example? Yeah, definitely. If I want to add a LiDAR, for example? Yeah, definitely. So the final version actually, you can see here, it has uh, what we call like a roof rack. So the roof rack makes it so that you can um, connect something like an arm on top of it. The Ray can handle a two kilogram payload, and because it has the host capability, you can connect uh, something to it with a USB-C and then you can control it. So if you were somebody that knew what you were doing, you could take Ray and you could put it on top of, say, your lawnmower at home, and you could you could work it to be able to autonomously mow your lawn using Ray, uh, with Ray being the host to do that, to be controlling your, your lawnmower. Okay, thank you so much. Of course.